Hey everybody, uh, this is Matt from Matter Hackers, and I want to answer some of your questions about Nylon X today. We've pulled up some of your questions here, and so we're going to take a look at uh, what Mario's asking, which is what is the maximum operational temperature this material can handle? Uh, and this question comes directly to you from the TDS, which you can actually download and see in its entirety right on the product page. There's kind of two answers. Uh, in a short-term uh, situation, it can be up to 150 degrees C, but if it's like a constant exposure, a long-term exposure, you're gonna wanna limit that to like 120 or like lower if you can, but if you absolutely have to be in like 110 degrees C, the material should be able to handle that in the long-term. Uh, our next question is, uh, will Nylon X absorb moisture once a part is printed and will absorbing the water make the pieces change shape or dimensions? This is an excellent question because we talk a lot about how it's super important to dry your nylon material before printing it. And yes, your material or your parts rather are going to absorb water after they've been printed, but it's totally fine because the reason we want you to dry your filament before you print it is that you want it dry while it's printing. Because for something like Nylon X, where you're printing at like 260, 265 degrees C, that's way higher than the boiling point of water. And so it'll actually like flash boil in your hot end and it can cause problems, make your parts weaker and maybe even clog your printer. And so that's the thing you want to avoid. But after that, like every nylon thing in the world, that's unless it's like in a vacuum chamber or something, like it's got water vapor absorbed in it and they handle it just fine. So great question, but you're all good to go. Our next question comes from Joshua, who is asking, can you post-process parts to be sealed with a clear coat or epoxy to prevent moisture absorption? Uh, sort of also related to our last question, like, yes, you can. Uh, maybe you don't necessarily need to be super worried about it unless the moisture you're talking about is like it's in a specific environment where you don't want that liquid to actually be like affecting the part. But just as far as general moisture absorption, you don't need to worry about it too much as far as water vapor. Um, but yes, you can. You could apply some kind of clear coat on the outside. One of the nice things about Nylon X is it does have like a little bit of a matte texture. So you do get a good base to like apply the paint or an epoxy or something like that too. Our next question is what is the recommended infill for printing when it comes to strength? Excellent question. This is a great question and I love answering it because everyone always thinks that like I want a part to be stronger, turn up the infill and that will help. But really, if you wanna make a part stronger, the best first setting to change is gonna actually be your perimeter thickness. So if you wanna make a part stronger, I say take those like two perimeters and try like four or five or something like that. Of course, this is only gonna really be helpful if your actual like feature of the part is thick enough to actually have all those perimeters, but that would be the first thing I would change. But also let's like actually answer your question. Three dimensional infill patterns are gonna be nicer because they actually provide support in all three dimensions instead of just two. So something like a gyroid or cubic um, are gonna be better than just the traditional grid. Uh, my personal favorite is what's called adaptive cubic, which is that cubic three dimensional structure, but it actually like reduces the amount of infill like way deep inside your part. And it does that because that doesn't actually reduce the strength very much, but it still saves a little bit of time Time, saves a little bit of material, um, but still does the great work of the cubic infill. So good question, but I'd turn up those perimeters first. Our next question is, do I need an enclosure around the printer, such as like when printing ABS, in order to print with Nylon X? I plan on printing very large parts. The detail there is very important because if you are printing small things, like if you're printing something like Phil here, I'd consider this like right on the boundary of like small and medium. And if you're printing something like this, you generally don't need an enclosure because Nylon X is a little bit more forgiving when it comes to like warping and splitting compared to regular nylon or compared to things like ABS. But if you're printing larger parts, then you are gonna be stretching your luck a little bit and it's gonna be best to have an enclosure. In addition to the fact that just having an enclosure is gonna give you better parts as far as better strength from better interlayer adhesion from the elevated chamber temperature, as well as just better looking parts overall. So if you don't have an enclosure, you'll be fine on like small to medium parts. Um, but if you really want the best performance, it's the way to go. Can I purchase a spool of Nylon X, then print without baking it in an oven and expect good results? Is everyone using an oven beforehand to preheat their spools, or is it the recommended procedure after leaving Nylon X in a non-sealed environment for a while? Again, good question. 
And whenever possible, my answer is gonna be use active drying. Like always dry your material before you're printing. And in fact, like be drying it while you're printing it. Like that's why we have a product called the Print Dry that's like a filament dryer that's also a spool holder. So your spools can just be in there and feed directly into the printer from there. But in reality, the answer to this is yes, you should always dry your material after you receive it in the mail before you print with it. Just because we try our best, but we can't 100% guarantee that every single spool of Nylon X is going to arrive with like a intact vacuum seal. So things happen in shipping, you might have a spool that's been exposed to the air and has absorbed a little moisture and just best thing to always do is dry it before you print with it as often as you can. Our next question is, uh, the maximum my nozzle will go to is 220 Celsius. It looks like it is recommended to be printed at 240 to 260. Will it work at the slightly lower temperature? Unfortunately, no. Uh, you're probably not even gonna get it to come out of the nozzle at all at 220, just because it's not enough temperature for the material to actually soften and flow. But also, even if you could get it to like come out of the nozzle at that temperature, your interlayer adhesion, like how well the individual layers are stuck together, is gonna be really, really bad, and your parts probably won't stick together at all, or at the very least, they're not gonna just be strong in any way. So. Unfortunately, 220 is not gonna work. Um, I recommend you look into upgrading to an all metal hot end that can go to 300 because that will solve your problem. Next question is, what is the spool size, all dimensions? Uh, that is a great question. I'm gonna direct you to the technical specifications of the product page. I don't know those numbers off the top of my head, but I know for a fact they're on the product page down at the bottom in technical specifications. We have that data in there for you. Next question is what is the density of this filament? And this question's written in all caps, which is great because my answer is in all caps because I love talking about the density of Nylon X because uh, it's an awesome feature that I feel doesn't come up enough. Nylon X is one gram per cubic centimeter, which is important because like PLA is 1.24, which means Nylon X is like 20% less dense than PLA which is awesome because you get the great strength of carbon fiber reinforced nylon at reduced weight. So if you print this fill with the same amount of like infill and perimeters and everything in PLA versus this one in Nylon X, this one's gonna be like 20% lighter. So if you're using, if you have an application where you need the strength, you also get the lightness, but if you need the lightness, you can also get the strength. And this is also great for you guys because you buy filament by mass. You buy Nylon X half a kilogram at a time, and this lower density means that this half kilogram spool of Nylon X will make like 20% more stuff than a half kilogram spool of PLA will. So it's a really great feature of this material, blends the strength with a very nice element of lightness as well. Our next question comes from Grimms who asks, okay, I have a Bamboo Lab X1 carbon with a 0.4 nozzle and a 0.2 millimeter nozzle with a textured plate. Awesome, that's a great setup. I have not had too much luck printing with this filament. Any helpful tips to make it so I can print with this filament? Um, so sorry that you're having issues, Grimms, but yes, we can absolutely make this work. We can absolutely get it going for you. Without any additional details about what specific issues you're having, the first thing I would say is make a actual dedicated profile for Nylon X in Bamboo Studio. That way, as you fine tune your settings for like temperature or speeds or flow rate, anything like that, you'll actually be saving them to a profile for that material. Um, unfortunately, I don't have anything that says like, are you having an issue with bed adhesion? Are you having an issue with flow or with like, you know, whatever it might be. So if you're out there, Grimms, feel free to send more information and we can, we can help you be a little bit more uh, specific with our answer there. But making a custom filament profile is gonna be very helpful because then you'll be able to actually save, essentially save your progress as you go through and refine your settings to make it um, print even better. What size nozzle should I use to prevent the chopped carbon fiber from clogging? Will a 0.4 stainless or hardened steel work or should I go larger? A 0.4 nozzle will do just fine with Nylon X. Like 90% of the printing I've done with the material has been at 0.4 and I've never had a clog. Uh, I do wanna say that the stainless steel nozzle I would stay away from. Those are like exist for a different purpose. They're not abrasion resistant, at least not enough for something like Nylon X, but the hardened steel nozzle is uh, definitely the way to go. Um, or at least it's something that will work. There are other options beyond hardened steel, but hardened steel 0.4 will do great. 
but also you can go to a larger nozzle size to further enhance some of the strength benefits of the material. Because going from a 0.4 nozzle to like a 0.6, which is 50% larger, or a 0.8, that's twice the width of the 0.4 nozzle, is gonna really improve your interlayer adhesion and make your parts even stronger as long as you're okay with the slight reduction in like surface finish and like minimum feature size that you have to lose when you go to those larger nozzles, but you get strength as a benefit. Our next question is, does this filament work with an Ender 3 V2? So I don't remember off the top of my head like exactly what components are on the Ender 3 V2. So I'll answer this question actually by saying, the things you need to care about to know, can I print Nylon X on my printer? are can you get to the right temperature? So that like 265, 270, so all metal hot end, you need that. Abrasive resistant nozzle. So as I said, like a hardened steel nozzle, a ruby, diamond back, anything like that is gonna work. Um, just not brass, that's what's important there. Um, you also need to make sure you have a heated bed that can get up to 70 degrees C. I think pretty much every 3D printer today is gonna have that, but do please double check to make sure that yours can do at least that temperature. And then something like a Garolite build surface is actually like the best. That's just an awesome build surface for nylon. Um, but you can use other surfaces and their adhesives like the nanopolymer adhesive or Magigoo has a blend of their adhesive that's specific for uh, nylon or polyamide. So they have Magigoo PA, which is specific for nylon that will help with that a lot. And then if you really wanna get the most out of it, an enclosure is a great thing to have. I don't think the Ender 3 V2 has one of those, but there are solutions to do something aftermarket to make that happen happen. So as long as you've checked all of those boxes, then your Ender 3 V2 or any 3D printer will be able to print Nylon X as long as you got all that stuff. Our last question comes from G Kruger 25 who asks, will this withstand temperatures between 195 F and 220 F after printing? I really appreciate you calling out the units there because I'm very used to using Celsius for temperatures in 3D printing. So converting that over, that's like 90 to 105 degrees Celsius. And the answer is most likely yes, because referencing right off the TDS for Nylon X, your maximum short-term temperature is like 150, but then your maximum long-term temperature exposure is like 90 to 120. So most likely you are gonna be good for your application with Nylon X, but do please like do some testing, be very observant of your parts and in initial testing, because while we have this data for, from the testing for the TDS, I don't know exactly what part you're printing, exactly what kind of orientation and situation it's in. And so your mileage might vary a little bit because you're kind of at like 85% of the maximum there. So do some tests, be aware, but off the top of my head, you're definitely good to like go forward with, with testing because I think the material is gonna suit your needs. So that's gonna do it for today for these questions uh, about Nylon X. Thank you all very much for asking. I love seeing the engagement around this material because it's very exciting, it's very powerful, and so I'm excited to see people curious about it. And I hope that the answers to these questions help you all be able to print more with this material, and I'm excited to see what it is you make. So to order your spool of Nylon X, head over to matterhackers.com, and we'll see you next time.